We're bringing a few stories for you today, including some really interesting things going on with The Legend of Zelda with a brand new interview with the director of the game. We have some weird stuff happening with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and yes, folks, it's that time of year. We have to go over the Black Friday deals for Nintendo Switch, specifically at Walmart and Target. Look, we're not going to go over any of the stuff dealing with what Nintendo has already announced for their Black Friday deals because that stuff's happening at almost every retailer, but there's additional deals on top I want to go over and let you guys know about because you know what? Some of these deals are really, really, really damn good. Now, look, you know what also is really damn good? All of you. Thank you so much for being here. Let's dive into the news. So our first story here deals with Tears of the Kingdom because of a brand new interview that the director of the game did with Nintendo Dream Magazine out in Japan. One of the questions says, Princess Zelda's story develops from a separate point of view from Link's, and I wonder what things you kept in mind for that. Fujibayashi says, Tears of the Kingdom is a story built from multiple tales layering upon each other, such as the story from Link's perspective and the story from the perspective of the heroine, Princess Zelda. In the last game, Breath of the Wild, Princess Zelda's story was about struggling and feeling worthless due to not being able to meet the expectations others had for her, but finally finding her path and maturing in the end. In this sequel, Princess Zelda has overcome her troubles and determined the path she has to take, and now she has started to wonder what she can do for the people who currently live in the land of Hyrule after the kingdom had been destroyed by the Calamity. There we tried to practically imagine how Princess Zelda's life has been since the end of Breath of the Wild's story. So they go on to ask, when her appearance was first revealed, her shortened hair left a strong impression. Fujibayashi responds, The change in hairstyle is something that lets players feel that Princess Zelda has been living her life in the land of Hyrule, isn't it? After the battle with Calamity, Princess Zelda has been actively participating in restoring people's livelihoods and other forms of humanitarian aid, so I think she decided to make moving around easier. There are elements that hint at how Princess Zelda has changed scattered around the game, and I think that would be fun to try and find them. So then they go on to say, Sonya released a powerful light in a dragon tear cutscene, and I wonder if that is also related to Princess Zelda's growth. Fujibayashi responds, She might be one of the more powerful Princess Zeldas in history. Princess Zelda's story in Breath of the Wild was about overcoming a hurdle and maturing, while in Tears of the Kingdom, she is thinking about what to do in this world after her kingdom was destroyed. Deep down, she wonders if the Kingdom of Hyrule should even be revived in the first place. At this point, this event led to her going back to the past and seeing the age of her ancestors founding their kingdoms. Princess Zelda's father was a strict man, and she wasn't able to learn from her mother as she passed away so soon. But in the past, she meets a kind father figure and an experienced mother figure. I think the dragon tear cutscenes show how she learns a lot from them and grows as a result. She faces off against Ganondorf much later and is shown to be in control of her powers. I think if you rewatch the dragon tear cutscenes in order after beating the game, you'll be able to see her steadily grow. So then they say, you can observe how the people have been rebuilding their lives or how time has been passing from conversations with people of Hyrule too. Fujibayashi responds, Tears of the Kingdom follows up on events post Breath of the Wild, so naturally we wanted to demonstrate the passing of time for the people living in the world. This isn't limited to just Princess Zelda. We wanted to make every character feel alive. Instead of having everyone wait around for the main character Link, the world has continued to move even without him. That's why we made all of the character dialogue change depending on the current situation. Now, obviously, this is a really natural progression for Zelda, and I do agree that the characters in Tears of the Kingdom do feel a bit more alive. Like, they're living their life, and we're just adventuring in that world as they're living it. And I do really love that, and that happens with a lot of modern RPGs, and you didn't really know if Nintendo would go all the way. It's sort of like how I want Nintendo to go all the way with full voice acting for the games, and they haven't done that yet. This is something I wasn't sure if they would progress past Breath of the Wild, and I'm happy that they did. And obviously, Zelda and her entire story arc is one of the main themes from Breath of the Wild through Tears of the Kingdom. And if you play both games, what an amazing story arc. Maybe the best story arc for Zelda in general. The one in Skyward Sword is also really damn good. Uh, so I guess that's maybe the best one for just an individual contained game. But in terms of like an overall arc between multiple games, I don't know that it gets better 
then Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom for Princess Zelda. And it's interesting because we heard it from the man himself. She is one of, if not the most powerful Princess Zelda of all time. And that is something a lot of us had kind of figured, but it's nice to actually hear it from the current director of the Zelda series. So, I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think about this stuff down in the comments below. Let's get into the next story. But before I get into that news, hey, guys, why don't you subscribe to the channel? Because if you subscribe, drop a like, all that jazz, you know what? We're going to rain some Oreo cookies down on all of those new subscribers. So, you know what? They look pretty damn delicious, don't they? What are you waiting for? Get Oreos raining on your head as well by subscribing today. So next up, we just have an interesting fact about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now, after we report on the Circana you know, stuff the other day, all the sales data in the U.S. for October, one interesting note fell through the cracks, and that is that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, for the first time since it launched on Switch in 2017, is no longer in the top 20 best-selling software for the month. Now, of note, again, they don't include digital sales data. Maybe it still would be top 20 if it had digital sales data. And yes, it's probably going to jump back in the top 20 this November with all the holiday bundles, the sales, all that sort of stuff. So I'm sure we'll see Mario Kart 8 Deluxe pop back up in the top 20 this month. But it is sort of a sign of the times, I think. We've talked about how the Nintendo Switch is hitting that point of saturation. Uh, Nintendo's own president, Furukawa, has brought up how they're trying to sell people their second and third, fourth Switches. So they know they've reached the saturation point, and I think nothing really tells that more than, hey, one of these mega-selling games finally dropping out of the top 20, letting you know that despite some metrics that go in the opposite direction, Overall, things are ramping down for Nintendo Switch. And look, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a behemoth. The only other game I could think of besides Minecraft, which is just going to sell forever, uh, that sells in the way that this game did was probably Grand Theft Auto V, right? 80 million plus copies across all those different platforms, multiple generations, consistently in the top 20 seller. Yeah, that's really what Mario Kart was doing, except it was doing it on one platform instead of relying on multiple. So, and multiple generations. I mean, yeah, Mario Kart 8 was technically a multiple generation game, but I mean, barely anyone bought Wii U. So, I don't know. You guys, just let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Do you honestly think that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, this is a sign of anything, or does it just mean, whatever, it's just an interesting fact, <laughs> you know? Now, next up, we got a couple Black Friday deals. We have some brand new deals popping up over at Walmart and Target. All of these deals starting, obviously, on the 22nd online. Uh, you can, you know, shop around your local areas. I know some areas have their stuff opening up on Thursday. Some aren't doing it till Friday, blah, blah, blah. You have to check with your local stores uh, for that sort of availability. And there might be some additional doorbusters directly at your personal store that we can't talk about here because we can only talk about the national ads. But what we have is here some new deals coming from Walmart. And first up, we have two we have we have two foot Pokemon plushes. So that's right, 24-inch Pokemon plushes available for $25. And there appears to be multiple in the ad. I think I saw um, a Squirtle and a Pikachu, but there's obviously going to be multiple of different types there. So 25 bucks for a two foot Pokemon plush, not too bad. Uh, next up, Walmart has a very interesting deal. This is the first place I've seen it. $8 off of Tears of the Kingdom this Black Friday. Now, that's a brand new game this year that knocks the price down to, what is that, $62.99 or $61.99 or whatever it is. That's a just a really, really good deal. And you guys, if you haven't picked up Tears of the Kingdom, it's going to be the cheapest it's been yet with an $8 off at Walmart, of all places. Uh, next up, Sonic Superstars is going to be 40 bucks at Walmart this Black Friday. Not the best deal for Sonic Superstars. That's actually at Target, but we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, Star Wars Skywalker Saga is going to be 15 bucks coming up this Black Friday. And then Nickelodeon Kart Racers on Nintendo Switch will be at 1988 this Black Friday as well. Now we get to Target, where there's not as many unique and interesting de deals, but there are some to pay attention to. First off, 10% off of all eShop gift cards. Actually, it's just 10% off of all like video game gift cards. So PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, it doesn't really matter. 10% off is 10% off. That's free money. So like you buy a $50 eShop gift card, 10% off of that, you're not actually spending 50 bucks to get 50 bucks. Not a bad deal. And then you have to also look at where I said, remember I said Target is the best deal for Sonic Superstars, $34.99. So $5 cheaper than Walmart, but of course, while supplies last, things can be sold out, all of that stuff. And then I'm going to give you just one deal that's not necessarily Nintendo related, just because I, this is a really great deal, like it, just in terms of pricing and all of that. There's going to be a Diablo 4 Xbox Series X bundle going for $449.99. That's like $100 or so off 
what that stuff would usually cost individually. There's also a Spider-Man bundle for $4.99.99. To me, not as big of a discount. It's just packing in a game with a disc version of PlayStation 5. But I don't know. I thought that those were some pretty interesting deals for you guys to check out. Again, nothing too crazy. That doesn't mean there's not other deals going on with Nintendo Switch. It's just all the deals Nintendo announced, right? They got their $200 Switch lights. They got, obviously, their Smash Bros. bundle. They have a bunch of games discounted at the $40, $30, and $20. All of that stuff was already advertised from Nintendo directly, and we already talked about all that stuff. And yes, Walmart, Target, and pretty much every retailer counting in those games will be running Nintendo's own sales, but I wanted to talk about additional sales beyond all of that because, again, we talked about Nintendo's Black Friday deals towards the beginning of the month. Now we want to get into what other you know places might be doing and you know what? If we hear about more ads and more deals heading up to Black Friday, we'll be sure to update you throughout the week. And you know what? Stay safe shopping this holiday season because we know how it can be, especially if you're going out in person. Uh, please don't get trampled. It's just video games, guys. It's just It's just consumer items. Not worth getting hurt for. Anyways, thank you so much for being here. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.